Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 47 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, we're gonna jump into Drum Machine Designer, which is Logic's main electronic drum kit instrument. And like Quick Sampler, this is gonna be another two-parter, otherwise this video would just be way too long. So in these two Drum Machine Designer videos, I'll demonstrate the following how to load DMD kits and customize the sound of DMD using the pad controls, how to build beats with DMD in the step sequencer, how to swap kit pieces from Logic's drum library, how to swap pads in DMD for custom samples, how to build a full custom drum kit with samples, how to create hi-hat exclusive groups, how to use DMD with third-party instruments, and finally, how to mix with DMD and print multi-tracks if you prefer working with drum tracks that are audio rather than MIDI. The first four topics I'll cover in this video, and in part 48, I'll cover the second four. But before I get into the tutorial, I want to quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. If you're a music maker, a producer, or a mixing engineer, and you're sick of digging through emails for production notes and feedback, you've got to check out Boombox.io. Boombox allows you to upload full mixes, stems, or multi-tracks, invite bandmates, collaborators, or clients to the project where they can leave time-stamped feedback on the tracks. And if you're working with clients and you want to keep them from downloading the tracks until they've paid their bill, you can do that too. If you want to check it out for yourself, head over to boombox.io and sign up for a free account today to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so I've got my same project here from the previous video when we were working with Quick Sampler. For now, I'm going to go ahead and just mute all of my Quick Sampler drum instruments because I want to kind of start from scratch and use Drum Machine Designer instead. You can certainly just go with Quick Sampler and build individual tracks, but the workflow in Drum Machine Designer is quite helpful, and I may even still be able to use some of these Quick Sampler instruments inside of DMD. Okay, so first let's just create a new software instrument. I'll pull that up to the top. And there's two main ways you can load up Drum Machine Designer. One way is just to load it up on the instrument tab here. So you just load up DMD, you click to open it up and you'll see that you get a blank kit this way. So this is the perfect way to start working with DMD if you wanna load in your own samples or build a custom kit with multiple kit pieces that are in Logic's library. Or you can just simply create a new software instrument with that track selected, go to the library, select electronic drum kit, and choose an electronic drum kit. So we'll come back to that other method of working with a blank kit in just a bit. I'm gonna start with a kit that's called Dark Arts. So I'll go ahead and select that. And now when I open up DMD, you'll see that this is a full kit that's already built into Drum Machine Designer. Drum Machine Designer also follows the general MIDI drum map so it's gonna start on C1 with the kick drum. So in Drum Machine Designer, you'll see these 16 drum pads here. Each of these will contain an individual sample or a synthesized drum sound. However, there are more than 16 samples in Drum Machine Designer. If you click here, you can cycle over to another page of pads and click one more time and there's another page of pads. So you can actually fit up to 36 kit pieces in each drum machine designer instrument. Each one of these drum instruments is technically called a kit piece. That's the correct terminology in Logic. And we'll come back to that in just a bit. But one thing I wanna point out here is that technically speaking, drum machine designer is not a software instrument per se. It's actually a special type of track stack that contains multiple drum instruments, each with their own sample or synthetically generated sound. So for example, if I click right here to open up the Dark Arts track stack, you'll see inside that there are individual channels, and at least for this drum kit, each of the channels are quick sampler instruments. So I have kick one here on C1, and I have kick one here, the channel for kick one. So if I play this kick, you'll see signal come through on the individual drum channel and on the main channel at the top of the track stack. So what's triggering this sound is actually the quick sampler instrument on that channel, which just contains an individual drum sample. Or if I go over to the clap, I can click here, that's clap one. 
you'll see that signal comes from this channel. If I click on that channel, once again, there's a quick sampler instrument here with an individual drum sample. So that's how these drum machine designer kits work. They are multiple quick samplers, drum synths, and the older versions of drum machine designer, they were ultra beat instruments that were loaded in here. But essentially each pad in the instrument is associated with a channel in the drum machine designer track stack. So you can think of this as one instrument, but it's really a collection of multiple instruments. Now this is actually really handy because you don't even really have to work with the individual channels if you don't want to, but because these are all in a track stack, you have individual mix control over each of the kit pieces inside of Drum Machine Designer. And this also makes it possible to work with third-party instruments inside of Drum Machine Designer, but again, we'll save that for the next video. Now, before I build a beat with this kit, I want to further customize the kit with some custom samples. There's two main ways you can do this. You can either drag and drop audio files directly into Drum Machine Designer, or you can load in kit pieces from Logic's drum library. So let's start by importing in some kit pieces, and I'll show you how to drag and drop samples later. So I like the kicks. I like the fact that there's a hard kick and a soft kick. I also like these kind of trap style hi-hats, but I want to add in sort of a harder hitting clap and a harder hitting snare. I kind of like this D1 snare. I'm going to use it for some accents, but I'm going to load in another snare here on E1. That's kind of a harder hitting snare instead of a rim tap. So all you have to do to swap out kit pieces is select the pad that you want to swap out. This will automatically open up the library. And if you don't know how to get to this area, if you don't see it this way as I do, you can just go to electronic drum kit, scroll all the way down to the bottom, select kit pieces, and you'll be able to select individual kit piece categories. So I'll go to snares, and I'm gonna scroll down. I don't want a rim tap, I want an actual snare hit. So I'm gonna go down to snare and find one of these other ones. And I'm gonna go with this Solaris snare. That's kind of a harder hitting snare drum. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the clap. I'll select the clap pad. This will automatically take me to the claps folder. I can scroll down and I'm gonna find the Solaris clap as well. There we go. Now, the great thing about using a drum machine designer in terms of beat building is all of the samples and pads that are in the drum machine designer instrument will show up in the step sequencer. So if I create a new pattern region, you'll see that all of those kit pieces are loaded into the step sequencer. So for the first part of the intro here, this is just kick drum. There's nothing special going on here. But since I'm using an eighth note triplet groove, I want to make sure that my pattern is also an eighth note triplet. And I'll start with a 12 step sequence. And for this, I'm going to use the kick two. This is the softer kick. Okay, so I just extended that to 24 steps, added a couple extra notes there, and then I'm gonna select this, hit Command R to repeat it, and let's add in some hi-hats for the second part of the intro here. In fact, what I'm gonna do is drag this over, just like so, and I'm gonna put the hi-hats here. Now, if I think those hi-hats are a little maybe too high pitched, you can change the pitch inside of Drum Machine Designer. So each pad you select has a series of macro controls that allow you to customize the sound. So you just select the pad, make sure you're on pad controls here. The controls on the right are almost always going to be volume, pan, reverb, and delay. And the ones on the left will be customized macro controls that'll be different for each instrument. So let's go ahead and pull down the pitch a bit on these hi-hats. I think they're just a, a little high for my taste. Now I can just repeat this again. And here we're in the main beat of the intro. So here's where I'm gonna add in my claps. 
on two and four. And again, I'm using the Solaris clap that I added in along with the Solaris snare. And then I'm gonna use the Dark Arts snare, or this one rather, just to add in some extra little accent notes and things like that. I'll go ahead and use the note repeat here as well. Let's see what that sounds like. And one other thing I'll do is I'm gonna swap out the soft kick here for the hard kick on kick one. Instead of having to type in each of these notes again, what you can do is you can right click or control click here and you can copy that row, go up to the row you wanna paste on, right click or control click and select paste row. And it'll paste in all of those notes. And then I can right click down here again and select clear row. So now I have the harder kick. Now you can also control the volume of each pad in Drum Machine Designer, so I'll select the kick. Let's pull the volume on that way up and add a little more, bit more knock to this as well. Now, one of the things you'll also notice is these macro controls are mapped to the volume faders on the individual channels, along with some of the effects on these individual channels. And if you adjust the reverb and delay in Drum Machine Designer, this simply controls the level of the sends on these channels, which are going over to some pre-assigned aux effects. So for my reverb, I don't wanna use this chroma verb and gate that they have on here. I'm actually gonna load up a third party reverb, so you can totally do that. I'm gonna load up this Valhalla vintage verb, and I'm gonna choose a gated reverb preset. So I'll use this large gated snare. And to add that reverb in DMD, just select the pad and pull up the reverb amount. And what you'll see is all it's doing is it's adjusting the level of the send on that channel. So now that's sending more signal over to bus five where the reverb is located. I'll do the same thing for the main snare. So that's right here. I'll just pull up the reverb. And again, you'll see the reverb level go up. And again, if I adjust the volume, all it does is it adjusts the level on the track Let's go ahead and add a little reverb to the hi-hats as well. And then for my verse, I'm gonna take the same beat and I'm just gonna simplify it by pulling out some of these extra kick hits. I'm gonna pull out these accented snares and I'm gonna keep the hi-hats a bit more simple. If you don't like using the macro controls inside of DMD, you can always control the volume of the channels, the pan, and any other effects that are on these channels in the mixer as well. Now let's say that there's a sample or multiple samples inside of the kit that you want to replace with your own custom samples. Either these are samples on your computer, maybe you're finding them on Splice, or maybe you downloaded them from the internet, or maybe they're even in Logic's loop library. As long as it's an audio file, you should be able to drag it in here on top of any of these pads and replace the existing pad. So for example, here in Splice, I've got this sample that I like. It's a hi-hat sample, and I want to replace hi-hat 2. So what I can do is just simply drag this sample on top of that existing pad in Drum Machine Designer. So I'll just drag this over, drop it right there. And what this does is it automatically loads this hi-hat into Quick Sampler inside of Drum Machine Designer. So I'll just call this Hi-Hat 2. 
Maybe I want to swap out the kick sample as well. Maybe I want something that's a bit harder hitting. So I can just drag and drop this into Quick Sampler. So I can just drag and drop this into Drum Machine Designer, double click to rename it, and it automatically loads this up in Quick Sampler. And if you want to see the sample here in Quick Sampler, you can just click on Quick Sampler Main. And if you go to Quick Sampler Detail, this will take you to the controls in Quick Sampler that we learned in the previous video. Now, because I dragged those samples on top of existing pads in Drum Machine Designer, when you open up the step sequencer, those samples will be automatically replaced on these rows as well. So I can access that hi-hat sample here, and I can access the new kick sample here. The sample's already been placed on the correct row, so my existing pattern will automatically work with these new samples. Although I do need to pull down the level of the kick drum a bit. This one's really much louder than the previous one. Okay, so real quick, let's just listen to what this sounds like all together with my custom-built drum machine designer kit that's sort of Frankensteined together from two different Logic kits and some custom samples. Okay, so that's how you can use Drum Machine Designer to build beats, how to create some custom kits using kit pieces and third-party samples. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create a completely custom kit just using raw samples and not starting with a preset. I'll show you how to create hi-hat exclusive groups, and I'll also go over how to mix your drums with DMD and how to convert your DMD kits to audio if you wanna take these beats over to another DAW or if you just like working with audio over MIDI. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.